Have you ever bought something and then regretted it instantly the moment you got it home? I found this table on Marketplace for $40, marked down from $50, and I thought, that looks like something I should buy. I'm not sure what I was thinking at the time. Um, maybe I was just in the mood for a challenge, but I offered the seller $30 for it. He accepted, and here it is. Now, there are some redeeming qualities to this table. It is Ethan Allen, and most Ethan Allen pieces I've come across are solid maple or birch and don't use veneer. And this one is no exception, as it says right on the bottom, solid maple and birch. Not that there's anything wrong with veneer, as I've said plenty of times before in my videos, but in a case like this, where this table's obviously going to need a lot of work to clean up the wood, having no veneer will leave me with more options. I can dig a little deeper if I have to, to try and remove stains or paint or whatever is on there without worrying about going through veneer. And another plus is that it comes apart. The legs come off and I can take the leaves off, which is gonna help a lot since I work by myself and that's just gonna make it a lot easier to move this around. I'm gonna try a scraper to get this paint off. It is a paint scraper after all, so see how it does. The paint scraper worked really well on the paint, and it also worked well on the original finish underneath the paint. This was a nice, crispy old lacquer finish, and it came off pretty easily. What was left of it, there actually wasn't a whole lot of finish left on the top. In addition to the paint scraper, I also used a card scraper and a utility knife blade whatever it took to get the finish off. On the legs, I decided to use a chemical stripper as opposed to scraping. I just don't like scraping on pieces like this that have little uh, crevices and nooks and crannies and all that kind of stuff. It's easier just to use the stripper. And the stripper I used is QCS by Stripwell. And it works really well to get these old mid-century lacquer finishes off. If you'd like to try it for yourself, I have a discount code in the description that will get you 10% off your order. I left a little bit of the old finish around this break here uh, because I have to glue it up and I know I'm going to get some glue squeeze out around there so that way it'll stay off of the raw wood and then I can just scrape it all off later. And I think I'm just going to use super glue for this just because there's no easy way for me to clamp this because of the shape of the table. Um, so, super glue I won't have to clamp. That was just some accelerator I sprayed on there to make it dry quicker. There it is. Okay, it's time to try and fix this issue here. So this board here has split from this board, and I'm not sure if it shrunk or the glue joint just failed or what happened. Um, but I can't get it back together. I've tried clamping it and I can't get these two edges to meet. And it's kind of a V-shaped or wedge-shaped uh, gap. So it's thinner down here and actually they're touching down here. And then it opens up up here. So I cut a really thin piece of maple from a scrap piece of wood on a table saw. And it's going to go in here like this. And I'll put some epoxy in there. 
And then uh, I have this piece of, uh, I don't know if it's granite or something like granite, but it's very flat and it's very strong. So I'm going to clamp it, put the glue in there, put this in, and then clamp both sides so that hopefully the clamps will draw these two pieces down onto this flat surface and bring them together and bring this end, this corner, back up a little bit. And then hopefully when I take all this off, this will remain flat, but we'll see. I've got this little uh, triangular piece down here and then these clamps here, pulling it down just to open up the split a little bit more so it's easier to get the uh, epoxy in there. All right, now take that out. Now try to get this in. And that's in. All right, I think I uh, should let it dry now and hope for the best. All right, let's see if this worked. Looks pretty good. It's relatively flat. Um, looks like this corner did come up a little bit, so that's good. I'll take care of the rest of this later when I sand everything. Once the finish was removed, I was left with a very blotchy look on the wood. The light areas, I think, are where the finish was missing from the top for a long time, and it kind of got bleached out. And the darker areas are where there was still finish protecting the wood. So I want to get this all a uniform color. And I want to try to get it as light as I can. Because on this project, I'm going for a very light color. I first tried using a random orbit sander to get that color out. But it was going to take a long time. So I went for something that I usually recommend not to use on furniture. And that's a belt sander. And I think this is actually the first time I've used this belt sander on a piece of furniture because it's very aggressive. But I think this is a good case for it. There's no veneer on this piece, so there's no danger of burning through any veneer. And I'm not concerned about saving any patina in the wood. I just want a fresh start with this and I want to get the wood as clean as I can get it. So I put a 120 grit belt on the belt sander. I was a little nervous about using it still and I didn't want to get too aggressive so I just started out with 120 and very carefully got to sanding. On the legs I didn't use the belt sander because that would have just obliterated all the details on the leg. So unfortunately I just had to do most of that by hand which took a while and I never really want to do it again but I got it done. It wasn't until after the hours and hours of arduous hand sanding that I found a video by today's sponsor, Woodworkers Guild of America, showing a much easier way to sand details like these turned legs. This video shows something called a flutter sander, or mop sander, which is something that I'd never heard of, but I wish I had before I sanded those legs by hand. This is just one example of what a valuable resource Woodworkers Guild of America is, for learning new skills and advancing current skills. Woodworkers Guild of America is an incredible online resource for woodworking instructions, ideas, and information. I'm happy to say that the first 1,000 viewers to click the link in the video description will get a full year of premium membership to Woodworkers Guild of America for only $1.49. Their videos are taught by professional instructors and they're always creating new videos to keep you interested and inspired. Viewers of my channel may have particular interest in videos like this one showing how to tighten loose tenons on a chair. And 
You can also check out their extensive section on finishing wood, where you'll find videos like this one, which I want to try myself, that shows how to make walnut stain from actual walnuts. So remember, the first 1,000 viewers to click the link in the video description will get a full year of premium membership to Woodworkers Guild of America for only $1.49. Thank you, Woodworkers Guild of America, for sponsoring this video. The next step in my quest to get this wood as light as possible was to use a two-part wood bleach. I got a kit that comes with two bottles. One bottle has sodium hydroxide, which I believe is also known as lye, and the other bottle is hydrogen peroxide. Sodium hydroxide is solution A, and the hydrogen peroxide is solution B. And you're supposed to put the sodium hydroxide on first, and for hardwood, leave it on there for 10 minutes. And while the wood is still wet with the sodium hydroxide, then you add the hydrogen peroxide and then let it dry. I left it overnight to dry, and when I wet the wood down to get a look at the results, it didn't look so good. It was pretty blotchy. There were some areas that did certainly get bleached, but then there were other areas that were still pretty dark. This is the top of the other leaf. And this is also not looking so great. It's kind of blotchy. It's got some spots where it's really light. And most of it though is not light. And it's, yeah, pretty blotchy. So definitely not what I wanted. Um, so I decided to do another application of the bleach. I think the reason that it didn't work so well the first time was because I didn't keep the wood wet enough with the sodium hydroxide before I put the hydrogen peroxide on. It was a pretty warm day and the wood just kept drying out. I tried to leave it for the full 10 minutes with solution A on it and keep it wet, but it just kept drying out. So I had to add a lot of the solution A to it and it doesn't come with a lot, so I was close to running out. So I was a little stingy with solution A. So the second time I just made sure to put plenty of solution A on and keep it wet. And also it was cooler out, which I think helped. It didn't dry out so quickly. And I put it outside in the sun to dry. I had read somewhere that that is supposed to help. I don't know if it actually did help because I don't know what it would have looked like if I didn't put it out in the sun, but it didn't seem to hurt. And here are the table parts after that second bleach application. And in this clip, they're completely dry and they do look very light and almost white. But the thing is, if I put a clear finish directly on the wood as it is now, the clear finish would bring out a little bit more of that yellow again or the light brown. So I decided I wanted to put a white gel stain on it to help keep it white. And this worked really well. I think they looked even better once the stain was on. It wasn't a night and day difference, but, but it definitely helped. And I think it'll keep it from turning yellow or brown again once I put the clear coat on. And I should also mention that I did sand the entire piece by hand with 150 grit before I applied the stain. I didn't film it though, because who wants to see more sanding? I let the stain dry and then it was time to add the clear top coat and for that I chose clear lacquer. At least that's what I chose initially. After getting a few coats of this on I realized that this table probably should really have a more durable finish, at least on the top. If any stains penetrate into this tabletop they're going to be very visible with that white color. So I thought that I should really go with something that provides a little bit more protection. 
So, in the spirit of trying new things, I went with a polycrylic finish. This is a water-based finish, and I've only used it maybe once or twice in the past four or five years. So it's still a bit of an unknown to me, but I felt like it would be a good choice because it won't add a yellowish amber color to the finish because that's something I really didn't want on this with that white finish. I wanted it to stay as light and um, not yellow as possible. So I brushed on a few coats. And even the process of brushing on a finish was kind of nice because I don't get to do that very often. Usually I'm either spraying it on or in the case of a wipe on polyurethane, I'm wiping it on. So this was kind of fun. Really the only challenge with this was to try to avoid bubbles in the finish. There would sometimes be some small bubbles in the finish as I brushed it on. And I tried to just gently brush those out, but without overworking the finish. And it was a warm, dry day, so this finish was drying pretty quickly. So it was a little bit tricky, but not too bad. And now I can put it all back together. And here it is, all finished. Thanks for watching.